Hello there, my name is Ross O'Brien. I'm here today to talk to you about immersive reality in healthcare and how we work with the UK government to shape the UK's future strategy. I'm very pleased to be here and talking um, at AWA, A, AWE Asia 2021. So, as I say, uh, I'm going to talk to you today about the growing value of XR in healthcare in the UK. It's a report um, uh, that we worked with uh, a number of clinicians, a number of companies um, and government agencies uh, to put together a strategy which would cover the whole of the, uh, of the UK. And I'm really excited to be talking about it um, uh, and to share some of the knowledge about how we've achieved such a great feat. Um, we work with a number of key government agencies on our steering group. So we work with NHSX, which is the innovation uh, and, and technology part of the NHS. We work with the UKRI and with Health Education England. We looked at the possibilities out there in terms of XR. We looked at um, well, what, 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 what was possible. Um, uh, uh, we looked at great, great practice that's out there already. And we found that there was a huge array of different applications uh, in, in healthcare. Um, we've cited 20 here. Uh, we, we've, we found so much more. These are just some of the, the largest areas. But what we wanted to do was to really drill down into five core areas, which were prime um, really to, 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 to be expanded um, uh, and, and, and really to focus on in terms of what's happening in the UK at the moment, where we could make most gains for patients, where we could make most gains for clinicians. And so therefore we based our, um, uh, our report around these key areas. So um, starting off with uh, clinical mental health, you know, probably the, the largest body of evidence um, uh, dating back for, uh, uh, for the furthest amount of time is around the application of virtual reality um, uh, for, for the treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, latterly in the UK, um, there's been more development around um, phobias and social anxiety disorder as well. We also wanted to focus on uh, mental well-being. So Sarah Tico wrote a great chapter around the pro proliferation of, uh, of, of VR uh, well-being apps that are out there um, and all the good that they're doing for people as kind of a direct um, uh, self-help um, or, 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 or something that patients can take up themselves and, and use for themselves quite rapidly and, and easily. One of the areas that I was really keen that was highlighted uh, in the report was around pain management. We've seen huge gains um, in the US and in Europe um, and in parts of Asia uh, in terms of the application of um, uh, virtual reality in healthcare for pain management. Um, and for me, it just kind of makes sense. Uh, you know, if, if, you can, if you can offer an alternative to medication where there might be issues of um, uh, drug dependency, where there might be um, uh, side effects uh, for patients that aren't, aren't able to take uh, medication because of their condition, um, there, are, there are really huge uh, gains to be made. So it was great that pain management was part of, uh, uh, part of the report. And the other, uh, one, one of the other key areas that we looked at was in the field of physiotherapy and re rehabilitation. Um, uh, one of our case studies focused on um, uh, how patients were supported with VR uh, for pulmonary uh, rehabilitation um, uh, during COVID. Um, and, and interestingly, the, the, the virtual reality services in the UK that responded to, um, a, 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 that were available for pulmonary rehabilitation were some of the only services in the UK available at the time because of COVID and because um, services were closed down uh, whilst, we, whilst we initially uh, uh, responded to, to COVID. We were lucky enough, as I said, in the offset to have Health Education England as one of our partners. So uh, Health Education England focused on two of the chapters that we put together. One on uh, workforce education and clinical skills. We've seen 
enormous gains in terms of workforce education um, uh, and, and the development of clinical skills, being able to take away uh, the, the human, being able to take away the element of, of risk around making a mistake um, uh, with a human um, uh, uh, is, is just, you know, it's just, in, it's incredible. Um, and so there's a really interesting chapter there uh, about, uh, 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 about the, the area of clinical skills and workforce education. There's also a piece around patient education, um, because obviously with, uh, with healthcare, the patient being able to take those kind of steps into a clinical environment virtually, or to understand what's about to happen in their care um, uh, in the future without it actually kind of happening to them uh, in real life at the time is, 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 is really powerful. Um, and so we, we focus on those, on those key areas and, and highlighted the good practice that's going on in the UK um, uh, at the moment in those areas. I think the other thing that we wanted to achieve was not just evangelizing, proselytizing, you know, uh, uh, telling everybody else how great we think um, uh, virtual reality in healthcare is. We wanted some hard facts and figures. So we worked with um, a University of Nottingham um, and then uh, and the NIHR in the UK um, in order to get those facts and figures built into the report so that strategists, um, uh, uh, clinicians, commissioners were able to look at the report and not just think, okay, this sounds like a good idea, but they were able to see what the economic benefits were. They were able to see what the benefits in terms of surgical performance would be. Um, uh, and to get some you know, hard, hard facts and, and figures in the report um, uh, that, would, that would benefit um, uh, the work we were trying to achieve. So the report, as well as highlighting those key areas that I've talked about, set out three key recommendations for the UK. The first, and it might not sound too lofty or, or too, um, uh, uh, too exciting, but the first was to landscape map what is happening in the UK health sector in terms of immersive healthcare now. Um, the reason for this is that there's not a clarity around it. We, um, we decided to do the, the, the report because essentially a lot of the time we see our colleagues um, going out to conferences, being kind of um, uh, uh, one of the, the, the keynotes talking about their fantastic work. And then they kind of go back to business as usual, working on their own, working in isolation, not having that um, uh, uh, kind of connection and, and, and people not knowing that they're out there doing this fantastic work. The second recommendation is probably um, uh, uh, the, the, the out of the three, the one that is, is most key to achieving um, uh, a more better um, uh, XR uh, healthcare in the UK and further afield. And I think the application of this recommendation could be looked across all uh, uh, digital apps and digital uh, uh, software and, and, and hardware provision. And that's about establishing centres of excellence to develop new pathways in order that an idea can be taken from point one, collaboration, to point six, which is distribution and everything in between. So if we follow that pathway, you can see at the beginning, what we're advocating for is a collaborative R&D knowledge exchange space around an idea. So if somebody has a great idea, um, in, 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 in VR or XR healthcare, um, a place to bring it, to kind of incubate it. Then next we need some uh, a space where those ideas can be blueprinted, they can be shared so that other, other organisations, other clinicians, um, other businesses can come into the space, work together and develop those ideas. Next, we're advocating for the testing, scaling and product development of those ideas. So if somebody's got a good idea, it's gone past MVP stage, um, they can see there's, there's legs in it, having the opportunity for uh, academic institutions or businesses or investors 
um, or, 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 or uh, of collaboration with other uh, organizations or clinicians having that having that space there then there's a really big key piece for us and it's around clinical and quality assurance a lot of the time um, uh, XR healthcare in the UK falls foul of not really knowing where it sits in terms of medical device licensing not really fitting into any of the common frameworks like MHRA or NICE um, or, or the DTAC in the UK so um, making sure that it's really, really clear uh, how we assure people of the quality um, uh, and clinical validity of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the tools and the hardware and the software um, uh, in, in medical uh, VR and XR. Point five is around a procurement framework. Now, this probably sounds like the least exciting of all of the um, pieces, but if, if, if you think about it, if you've got a mobile phone in your hand, you know where to go um, to purchase a digital app or a digital product. Mm -hmm. You go to the App Store, uh, whether that be on, on iOS in, in the App Store uh, for Apple or Google Play uh, and Android. So there is one place that you go that you know about. Um, there's not that for health healthcare, uh, for digital healthcare. Um, so we're advocating that there is, that essentially everyone knows where to go, Everyone then can see how good an app is, uh, how much it costs, what it does, and they can choose to purchase it or not. Um, uh, and this is what we're looking for in terms of hardware and software for, uh, uh, for immersive reality in healthcare. And finally, um, uh, an idea that's been uh, developed both by Brendan Spiegel in the US, uh, and Farhan Amin in the UK, and a number of other uh, uh, clinicians globally, is the idea of a virtual pharmacy. So enabling a clinician to essentially um, uh, 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 to essentially uh, diagnose somebody with a, a, an ailment and then to prescribe VR or XR to that patient side by side in the same way they might prescribe medication using the same electronic patient record system um, uh, and the same pathway and process. So really leveling up digital um, and pharmaceutical uh, interventions. So that's recommendation number two. Um, and then finally, uh, so, so sorry, this is uh, um, uh, our kind of vision for how the centers of excellence would work, um, uh, a collaboration between tech and industry, uh, academic research and, and healthcare um, providers. Finally, um, uh, the piece that we we call upon um, yourselves in the audience to, to join us on this part of the, the mission is to connect health, the, the XR and healthcare ecosystem. So there are so many players involved. There are so many um, uh, agencies, clinicians, uh, academics, businesses, interested parties, um, uh, evangelists like myself um, uh, that, that, that want um, uh, immersive reality in healthcare to succeed and to be joined up. But what we need is for that body. There are uh, groups on, on Facebook like VR Doctors, there are um, uh, fledgling organisations like the, the Hollow Medicine uh, Association globally, um, but, but still there's not a place for everything and everything in XR healthcare. And what we want to do is to try to uh, create that space um, uh, coming out from the UK, but being being a global movement, um, uh, and, and details of that are in in the final slide. So, just to kind of recap a little bit, what we what we feel we've achieved with this report is to bring together disparate parts of the UK healthcare uh, economy to think about virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, and how we can actually take some of the brilliant work that's going on in isolation and strategically bring it together, have a, a, a creative, uh, have, a, have a care pathway that everybody understands, is really clear, um, and people know where to, to go to get that information, um, and, and, and bring it all together. And what we would like to do is to talk to other governments, talk to other agencies internationally um, and get the same, um, uh, uh, export the same approach. So please um, take your time to go to our website, 
download the report, um, join the, the, the Healthcare Alliance online, um, and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you.